Hello to anybody and everybody who is watching this video. My name is Carmen and welcome back to another Animal Crossing video. And in today's video, we are going to go over 30 things that you can do on your Animal Crossing island every single day. Now, these activities are for anybody at any playing level. Whether you are a beginner at this game or you are a complete veteran, you will find something in this video that you can do every single day on your island. Whether it be maintenance, activities, you name it. By the time you're done watching this, you will not have any shortage of ideas of what to do. I know myself in my early early days of Animal Crossing, I would get bored trying to find things to do. I felt like I didn't have anything else that I could achieve, but once I learned that there were so many things that you can do to keep up on your island, I had something to do and look forward to every single day. So without further ado, let's get on with this list. I'm very excited. The first thing that you can do on your island every single day is shake trees and hit rocks. Not only will you get many materials from doing this, but you have a chance of getting very valuable things from doing such. You can obtain furniture that falls from trees when you shake them, as well as some bells that may fall too. When hitting rocks, keep in mind that you have a daily money rock, where you can make a few extra bells while doing your work. You may also hit your rocks and get things such as gold, very very valuable. Who doesn't love gold in Animal Crossing? So don't forget to shake your trees and hit your rocks. Second on this list is to look for fossils. Have you ever walked around your island and seen that little star on the ground? Well, you have a chance of digging up a fossil from one of those spots. With this, you can keep it in your storage or you can bring it to Blathers and he can assess them. And if you are lucky, you will be able to put a new item into your museum. If you look for fossils every day and you get Blathers to assess them and you put them into your museum, you will start to see it build up day by day. You may think that the things that you're donating right now isn't a whole lot, but as time goes on, you will begin to see a lot of changes with your museum. So dig those fossils. And speaking of digging up things that are in the ground, you can also look for money trees. Well, not the money tree itself. If you're walking around your island and you see a little glowing speck from the ground, this indicates that there are some bells buried underneath it. Once you dig it up, you have the option to either keep the bells for yourself or you can bury them back in the hole and they will triple. So as you can see what I'm doing now, I put 10,000 back in the hole and eventually it will have 30,000 bells whenever the tree is fully grown. This next one on my list is my personal favorite and it is to talk to your villagers every single day. I love hearing what they have to say and what they want to say to me. Sometimes they can even give you certain items, which is always a bonus. If you create a strong enough bond between you and your villager, then they will eventually give you a picture of themselves. So if you love your villagers and you want to get that strong friendship with them, talking to them every single day is the key. Moving on to number five on this list is to check your shop for new items. Every single day, your shop's items will update. So there's always something fresh and there's always something new for you to buy. So you don't have duplicates of a lot of things. Not to say that things won't show up again eventually, but you'll have something new to look forward to every single day. You can also check the cabinets as there is a lot of variety that comes with that as well, such as new types of flowers, new watering cans, umbrellas, and more. And while you are in that shop, here is number six, is to check your turnip prices. Getting into the habit of checking your turnip prices every day will in turn become very handy for you, as you will be less likely to forget when you want to sell your actual turnips. These prices change twice a day, except for Sundays when you can't sell your turnips. You can get a serious profit out of watching your prices carefully and jumping at them at the right time. It's always good to be patient with this, but if you see a great opportunity, then go for it. Because you, my friend, and your wallet will benefit from it greatly. Moving on to number six, which is to try and catch new fish and bugs. I know for me personally, fishing and catching bugs never gets old. I'm always excited to see if there is something new that I can donate to my museum. Not only is it fun to do these two things, but seeing your Critterpedia grow is very rewarding in a way. It feels very nice when I can see my progress of the hard work that I have put into fishing and catching bugs. And if you fish and catch bugs every single day, you too will see this progress. Next on my list is to water your flowers daily. If it rains on your island, there's no need to water your flowers for that day as they are all going to be watered and ready for the next day. If you water your flowers consistently, then you are going to have a much higher chance of your flowers breeding the way you want them to or to have more variety of flowers. This is a very, very crucial step, so don't forget to water your flowers daily. Number seven is to tend to your crops. Much like watering your flowers, tending to your crops is a very nice and fun activity 
need to do. Your crops will flourish and so will your recipes. Personally, I find this task very calming and I love when I have to take care of my crops in game. Number 10 on this list is to go on mystery island adventures with Cap'n. I cannot stress how valuable Cap'n islands are. You will be exposed and have access to so many things that you may not have on your island right now. Sometimes you will find new crops on Cap'n islands, new flowers, new bushes, new fruits, you name it, you'll probably find something new on Cap'n islands. You also get to be serenaded by him on the water on the way there, so that's a plus too, maybe, if you like Cap'n. I know that when I come back from my mystery island trip with Cap'n that I will always have something in my inventory that is very helpful to me and that I may not have had before or I just needed in general, so I highly recommend going to mystery islands with Cap'n every day. But keep in mind this is only once a day and it does cost 1000 nook miles, however I think that it is totally worth it. Number 11 is something that I have to do a lot more on my time and that is to visit Harv's Island. As you can see by the people here and the amount of stuff that is on Harv's Island, I do not visit it very often. But on Harv's Island, you can bring vendors to it so that you can have access to them as they are there and whenever they're not on your island personally. There's also fun activities, one that I just did, which is photography, which is really nice and fun. So that is also something you can do every single day on your island. Visit Harv's Island. This next one is to work on your builds, basically the whole plot of Animal Crossing. Now I know it's pretty self-explanatory, but working on your builds is a very, very good thing to to do to make your island look the way you want it to and to keep feeling inspired every single day. This is the main reason I keep coming back to Animal Crossing. If it weren't for the things that I could do with building and being creative and putting my ideas onto the actual game, then I don't think I would have much purpose for Animal Crossing. So if you have done everything and you're looking for something to do, working on your builds is always an option. Number 13 is to collect and sell valuables. Now you already saw me collecting some materials from hitting rocks and trees. Gold, iron, stone, and clay are pretty good ones to sell, especially the iron and the gold. So I would capitalize on your natural materials that you gather around your island and work to sell those. Fruits that are not native to your island sell for more than the native fruit would, so I would look into that as well. Number 14. Talk to the random characters that may visit your island. These include characters such as Leaf, Label, Kix, Sahara, and more. They each specialize in something different, so each time they come to your island they will offer you something new. Today I had Label come to my island and she gave me a sporty thing to put on and style, so not only do I get to do some tasks, I get a nice outfit in the end. So so make sure you talk to your random character that comes to your island every single day. Hanging out with your villagers is not only adorable, but it can also benefit you greatly. Sometimes when you walk into your villager's house, they may be cooking or building something. Hang around because they will offer you this DIY. If you already have it, then they will offer it to you anyways, as you can have an extra, maybe you can give it to somebody you know, or have it for keepsake. But if you don't have it, then there you go, you just earned yourself a new DIY. I love this so much because there is always something new to find with your DIYs and it's very special coming from your villagers as well so make sure to visit your villagers hang out with them and it will benefit you and you may get something more than just a nice friendship Number 16 on this list is to check and see if any of your villagers want to move out and to check your campsite. Every two weeks there will be a little speech bubble on top of a villager's head. This will either indicate that they have something random on their mind or that they want to leave this island. Now you have the choice to make sure if they leave or stay and they will listen to either one you pick so choose wisely. Also every once in a while the campsite will become occupied by a random villager. Number 17 is very handy because it allows you to have so much more space and be so much more organized and that is to get rid of any unwanted inventory. When you have a spare moment, go through your storage and see if there's any duplicates or anything that you just don't want. You can either give these away to somebody who may need them, you can trade with these items, or you can sell these items make a profit off of it. I know doing this really helps me to stay organized and I feel a little bit cluttered when things are not in my use and they are taking up storage, so I like to sell them and get rid of them and trade them, so you can too. 
too. Number 18 is to check for DIY bottles on the beaches. Every single day there will be a new DIY recipe in a bottle on your beach from somebody far out there who wants to share their recipe and thankfully you are the lucky one that has received it so you can gain a nice little DIY from that as well. Number 19, something that we all may struggle with is collecting all of the weeds. I know that this is a big problem for me because I time travel a lot so clearing weeds is something that is basically something I do daily and it is very good for the maintenance of your island so this is something you can do every single day. Moving on to number 20 which is to check the Able Sisters every single day. Every day there will be new clothing selections and they are quite cute so jump on that. They are very adorable and it's nice to have some variety of clothing in your storage so you can keep up with all of the latest fashion trends on your island. The new items come in a lot of variety of colors as well which is nice so there's a choice for everything. So if you love the fashion aspect of the game then make sure you check the new items in Able Sisters every day. Number 21 is probably the most helpful one on this list and that is to work on your Nook Miles tasks. Everybody has the Nook Miles app on their phone and you will be able to do daily tasks with them and earn Nook Miles. Not only are there daily tasks that you can do, but there are also ones that have specific categories that you can add on to as well. And as you can see here, there is no shortage of things that you can do and achieve in this game. So I would advise you to pick away at those achievements. Next is to visit the Roost for a cup of coffee. I like to visit Brewster because I think he's quite lonely. Every single time I go in there, there is nobody else, not a single soul. So it's a cute way to just sit down and relax and converse with other characters in the game. You can also invite characters through amiibo cards. I'm not going to go too much into that, but my tips and tricks video talks a little bit more about that. So I'll have a pop up in the top right corner right now if you'd like to check that out. So inviting your favorite characters to come and have a cup of coffee with you is an option as well. Number 23 is to check Nook shopping for any new items. As you can see, there are categories such as daily items that change quite regularly and they are some pretty cool items at that. You can also check the seasonal items. As you can see here, there's some sunflower themed things, which is beautiful. If I didn't have them already, I would get more. So make sure you check your seasonal ones as well, because you might find something that is absolutely adorable and that you love. And while you were at that, you just earned some more Nook Miles by visiting the ABD machine. As you visit the ABD machine every single day, those Nook Miles will begin to stack up and you will gain more and more with every day you visit. Next, is to check your bulletin board. There may be some announcements that you might have missed in the morning broadcast that Isabel gives you, such as birthdays and tournaments. If you have had anybody on your island previously, you may have missed that they have left something on your bulletin board, which is something that people can do. It's also fun to look back and see the messages that people have left for you. I hope I say it right, but number 26 is to look for gyroid fragments and to bury them and get your full gyroid. How gyroids work is that you can find fragments, bury them in the ground, and once you water them the next day or the next couple days, you will have a gyroid in full. You can use these to decorate around your island or just have them as little buddies to stand by your side. Up next is to check mail and send mail. You can have a lot of options when sending mail. You can send to your friends or your best friends, or you can even send to your future self, which is what I did in this example. This is just one of the many things that you can do on your island to keep from getting bored. With sending mail you also receive mail so make sure to check your mailbox because there is a lot of gifts and a lot of things that you may miss your villagers send you mail they may leave some pretty nice messages with a gift for you you have items that you order you may get mail from your friends so many things so just make sure to check your mailbox unlike me who does not ever check their mailbox don't be like me number 28 on this list is to shoot the balloons down from the sky now this may be pretty obvious but that big beautiful present that is taunting you will be yours if you shoot it down from the sky so make sure you do that so you can get yourself a nice little present to add to your collection of things. Deep sea diving is always a fun activity in Animal Crossing. It's a nice way to add more things to your Critopedia. It's a nice way to add more things to your museum and that is number 29 on this list. Go deep sea diving. It's very fun and it is quite time consuming so it's something to do if you're bored. You get to catch very cool creatures and you may run into this guy once in a while. So yeah, Go deep sea diving. It's very fun and it's very beneficial to your island. There's no limit to how many times you can go deep sea diving in a day. And the final one on this list, number 30, for something to do every single day is 
going to random dream addresses. Unfortunately, I am pretty sure that you will need to have a Nintendo online membership as this is something that is online. If you go to sleep to dream and you ask Luna to surprise you, then she will take you to a random dream address where you can then explore and visit somebody's random island. I'm usually never disappointed with the islands that I get there. So creative and they're so fun and it's a nice way to just see what other people have to offer, what's going on in their minds and what they can display through their creativity on on their island so that is something that you can do every single day as many times as you want it is something i have discovered recently i did a video on that as well i will put a pop-up now and it was very very fun and it was very very cool to see this inspiration from other people so that is an option as well it is very fun and with number 30 all said and done that is going to wrap up our list of things that you can do on your island every single day in animal crossing this is a very fun video to make it definitely reminded me of the things that i have to catch up on and i hope that it reminded you as well so with that said, thank you to anybody and everybody who did watch this video. I really, really appreciate it. Let me know in the comments below if something was on this list that you never even thought of that now you are going to do daily. I would love to hear your input. I love talking to you guys and seeing what you have to say. So please let me know in the comments below once again. So once again, thank you for watching. I would really appreciate if you would subscribe and like this video. Doing these two things helps us as a channel to grow and also helps me to push my content out to more people who enjoy this type of content and it inspires me to make more. Alright, thank you again for watching this Animal Crossing video and I hope it helped and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!